Listening to Spiritual Encounters with Pastor Casper McLeod. And now, here's your lion hearted host, Pastor Casper. Welcome to another Spiritual Encounters, and I am your lion hearted host, Pastor Casper, along here with my dear co host, Pastor Brandon Gallops, and our producer. Barry Rashad is somewhere in an undisclosed location tonight. So, um, but we've got exciting news because Daniel Dual is with us, and we're going to talk about really important stuff through ministry. One of our most important, powerful weapons is prayer, calling false things as, as if they are. If then you know, because so don't touch that dial. Stay with us, Pastor Brandon. How are things going on your end? Doing great today, Pastor Casper, and uh, looking forward to tonight, seeing where this conversation leads and uh, just seeing what the Lord has in store for our conversation tonight. Looking forward to learning a little bit more about uh, Daniel's ministry. I love the uh, the vision statement that is on the very front of his website that says we are passionate about promoting unity in the body of Christ worldwide and assisting in the creation of sheep nations. I love it, brother. What a great mission statement. Tom, you're welcome to the Spiritual Encounters. So delighted to have you. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. I am very privileged to be sitting here talking with you gentlemen, and I'm excited to see where this goes. And so uh, where would you like to start? When we study... Um, like the book of Revelation, right? I mean, prophecy is not the, the scare you to prepare you. And we're looking around what's going on today, right? Um, Revelations 1 3 even tells us it's, it's, um, you know, it's a blessing to, to study the words of these prophecy. The Lord calls us a remnant church. I've got people contacting our ministry, our church. They're frustrated. I'm trying to find a place where they can meet corporately, to pray together, to learn of God's ways. and um, we read in Revelations uh, 12, you know, about the dragon, Satan. He's, he's, he's going after the woman, the church. And, uh, <clears throat> he's making war with the remnants, with the seed. Uh, keep the commandments of God, the, the, the testimony of the Lord Jesus. And sadly, we got to understand that even professing Christians are sometimes uh, unaware that they're doing the work of the enemy. I mean, how many believers are walking around that have been infiltrated with the wrong kingdom and they're acting in, the, in, in light of the wrong kingdom, entertaining poisonous uh, thinking, uh, entertaining bitterness. Um, guys that show up at, at churches and, and for everybody else, they're looking at him and thinking, well, there's a, a, a godly man that behind the scenes we find out he's abusing his wife or children or something like that going on, right? There's sexual perversions going on. Um, all this stuff it's been it's been going on for centuries, right? Because it's the same unclean spirits coming after God's kids. And he told us, Luke 10, 19, right? Behold, I give you power over all the works of the enemy. Nothing shall be any means hurt you. When's the time for us to, to, to stand up for it, move in, in, in the power of the, the Lord from those that deny the power from such turn away? Daniel, you're in the front lines here. Tell us about your ministry. Ha. <laughs> Well, you bring up a lot of things uh, that we could all take a track on just in that little explanation. Bride Ministries covers a lot of territory. Uh, we cover advanced spiritual warfare. We cover eschatology and end time stuff. We cover uh, the kingdom of God. And we also go really deep into inner healing. And one of the things that happens in the body of Christ, just like you described, is that there is an infiltration of an alternative kingdom. Uh, the way that this happens is a little bit sneakier, though, than I think a lot of people have in traditional mindsets concluded. You know, it's I, I think that a lot of people think, well, it just works like this, you know, 
you just put on a mask and you act like a good person at church and then you just take off that mask and you're just a bad person in other locations and you have full control over where you're being a good person, where you're being a bad person. And, you know, um, that's just the way it is for everyone. And what we have found is that actually that's not the way it is for everyone. As a matter of fact, I have met many, and, and, and you could call them Christian witches, uh, pe people that have the, uh, the capacity to do lots of witchcraft, but when they show up in the church, they're very Christian. And you wonder, like, how do you have both of these things trading through the same person? When you talk to the person, they are fully convinced that they are not doing dark things. And this is where the conversation on dissociation meets the manifestation in the body of Christ. And so let me just explain dissociation and, and why we look at this so heavily. But dissociation, I find, or we have found, is equivalent to the biblical conversation on brokenheartedness. In other words, when the Bible says that God comes to bind up the brokenhearted, one of the clear meanings of this is that he came to fix those who had dissociated through trauma. And dissociation starts uh, for many people, and we're going to backtrack and then work our way into explaining some of the things that you, know, you, you opened up with. Uh, dissociation for a lot of people begins in early childhood, where at the age of three, four, five, six, seven, they begin to undergo heavy duty physical abuse, sexual abuse, psychological abuse, and emotional abuse, often coming from parents, uncles, aunts, family members, even older siblings. Mm -hmm. And in order to survive that trauma, yeah, do they take on demons? Sure. But also, they are shattering. Their soul is actually going through a process of breaking in pieces. In, in the book of Job, there's a really interesting passage where, where, where he actually comes out and says, how long will you break my soul in pieces with your words? And what does he mean there? He means that the, with, with the reception of certain words, and you, you, we, we could relate this to verbal abuse, it can produce a fracturing of the soul, which is dissociation. And so people that go through a lot of trauma when they're young, they begin to learn how to do something called going away, right? right? Because when we're older and we find ourselves in an uncomfortable situation, we, we can leave a situation. We, we could open the door, we could walk out of that situation and we could just leave. Like, you know, you're not treating me right, I'm out of here. Bad boss, right? mistreating the employee, I'm out of here. You, bad relationship, I'm leaving, right? When we have the capacity to do that. But when a person is four years old and their uncle is coming for them to sexually abuse them, they can't actually outrun, outpower, outmaneuver, or outwit that abuser. So instead of going away, they go away in their mind. They actually learn how to be present physically, but not be present mentally. Um, people do this in jail too, man. many prisoners. I mean, if you get really into the nitty gritty of it, it's like, well, were you raped in prison? Yeah. Um, what did you do? I just went away in my head, came back when it was like that. You people learn how to dissociate to survive this dirty, broken world. Well, for the child, this often leads to, um, if, if it happens at a young age, of age, the presence of what we call alternate personalities, and, and they are the, the product of heavy-duty trauma received at a young age, and, and, and this walks us into the conversation of dissociative identity disorder, where you have the presence of two or more alternate personality states in an individual. And the church is full of individuals that have been highly traumatized at a young age way, way more than we want to account for. And so when these people come into the church, what happens is they have a part of them that is an adult presenter. And it may be a very Christian part that is an adult presenter. But 
there may be a six-year-old part that received a heavy-duty Jezebel spirit while they were being raped at the age of six and figuring out who can give me power to survive this, and Jezebel walks in. So now you have Jezebel sitting in a six-year-old part of that prayer, and this is an overly simplified case, and a 32-year-old woman showing up at church. So you meet the 32-year-old woman that's praising God in the front row. But when certain things begin to transpire, the six-year-old with the Jezebel spirit is what begins to drive behavior. And so people are left confused as to why is this person such a mess and why are they creating such havoc? And why is it that when, you know, the 32-year-old is confronted, there's an ignorance or, 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 or a total mask even to their understanding of what they're being accused of. Meanwhile, everyone sees something going on deeper. And so what we have learned at, at Bride Ministries, because we began working with survivors of extraordinary abuse, satanic ritual abuse, government-sponsored mind control agendas, even Illuminati abuse from people that are defecting from the cult of the Illuminati itself. Um, we have been able to back engineer things to the point that we're understanding dissociation not only on a very severe level, but for more down to earth, normal situations and circumstances and seeing how brokenness has been an underlying problem that the church has not been very effective at addressing. And so what happens is people come into church and we say, you know, oh, you know, we're just going to yell at your demon. And sometimes we, we, we do, you know, we, we yell at the demon and it doesn't leave. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it has a legal thought, right. huh? if it has a legal right, then we've got to go in there, find out where it got a legal right and cancel that assignment. That's right. right. And that's where you get into legal rights, because how much agreement does the six-year-old have with the Jezebel spirit? You know, and this is where I, I, I think um, the body of Christ has a lot of room for upgrades, a lot of room for uh, stepping into a more effective engagement of people to help people come out of their areas of bondage and into that glorious, victorious liberty we have in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. It's interesting, Daniel, the points you make because, uh, man, I deal in uh, in addiction ministry every single day. I run a rehab. Um, probably 80% of our church body, uh, where I'm associate pastor, um, are people that come uh, are either currently still in addiction on their way out or on the other side of. <clears throat> and everything that you just said is so true. And that and that is what leads so many people into chemical addiction. Because somewhere along the line, there's been some traumatic event, something that's happened that makes it not okay to be them. And they are and they eventually find a substance, a chemical, whether it be with a doctor's note or from a drug dealer on the street corner that makes it okay to be them. And so that's one of the first things that I as I begin counseling with men, that's one of the first things I tell them is, listen, drugs is not your problem. Drugs is actually what's fixing your problem for short periods of time. What I want to do is I, I want to dig down and I want to help you figure out where's the root problem. Let's fi let's find the root problem. Let's address it. Let's deal with something you've never dealt with. And then we can rid you of the issue of the drugs and the desire for that and the need for that. And so, I, listen, I just uh, I, I'm astounded at, at everything that you're saying, uh, not because I've never heard it before, but because I say it all the time. <laughs> uh, and it's just, and I, 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 I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful to have someone out there. Not that I'm the only person that has discovered these things or saying these things, but I'm just so grateful to hear someone else is addressing things at this level uh, because it's so true. And, and in my opinion, one of the reasons the church won't deal with this is because we have this idea in church that we have to have it all together to walk into church. And that's the biggest lie perpetrated by the enemy. Jesus said he came for the sick. Church mm. is a hospital. Church should be a hospital for the sick where we can come in and we can openly share our problems for the healing that is much needed within the church. So thank you, brother. I just, man, I just, I, 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 we're going to have a great time for the rest of the night. I can tell. 
But it does well, you know, confess your sins to one another so that you can be healed. I was just I said that. we The church is a spiritual hospital. Um, but I, I do want to go back to one thing you said earlier when we started. Um, you talked about inner healing, and I think the enemies brought a lot of confusion with that terminology um, because now we've got churches that have professional Christian counselors practicing you know, that term inner healing, uh, often based on something like theophostics, which in, in theory and practice is nearly every um, uh, the inner healings that have invaded the church with an, an occultic overtone. Also, because you know, the Nazis were, were a religious organization, call it what it is, and the whole MK alt, I mean, they, they learned that they can um, traumatize someone to a point where they could split their personality. And then instead of having, you know, like um, two pieces of wood, you got, you know, uh, you can split it to four or five, eight, whatever. So dealing with that, what we'd call the unconscious mind, I mean, this is something we can trace back to occultic practitioners, Carl Jung and, and Sanford, who based this stuff on, you know, the, their work. Um, the Lord told us what it was going on. It's, it's a broken heart. And Jesus came to mend the broken hearted. So, um, you know, when we hear these kind of things, where you, we're going to heal your memories, you can't heal memories. It doesn't work that way. I mean, I think it's a big red flag, anybody that's diligently in the Word of God here. Um, that's why I, I teach so much on, on 2 Corinthians 10, 5, learning how to take control of your, your thought life. Um, I mean, look, the, the Lord said in Proverbs 4, you know, if we, if we meditate on his word day and night, right? All of the days and all the night. Well, then we're going to, it's going to be healing to all your, your flesh. And um, let, let me let me continue with Daniel here, because um, you obviously got a lot to share with your ministry and helping people get free. Maybe you um, could give us a testimony of some people that have come out of the, the depths of despair. So just to encourage those that may be struggling right now watching this. Um, sure. We have a lot of testimonies. Um, I mean, many of our testimonies go far beyond what people are willing to share on a public forum because of the mm -hmm. nature of just how radical those testimonies are. So uh, the, the, the question really is, I mean, how far do you guys want to give me some rope to go? I mean, can, can we talk about level one breakthroughs, level two breakthroughs, level three breakthroughs? Let's go for I, the mean, I mean, you're among friends, you're among family. Let's go for the jugular. Let's, let's, what's manifesting? Well, manifesting. okay. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. Um, when I talk about inner healing, I mean, let me just, just ground this out. When I talk about healing, I am talking about Isaiah 61, okay? He came to preach good tidings to the meek, to, to, to bind up the brokenhearted, to open the prison doors to them which are bound, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort those who mourn, to give us beauty for ashes, the oil of gladness for mourning. This, this is the ministry of Eli healing that I talk about. Now, um, I, 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 I do acknowledge, uh, gosh, that there... There is an occult application to the terminology of unconscious and subconscious minds. Um, however, when we get into definitions, I also have found that sometimes using the world's definitions as they understand them can help to communicate biblical principles when we redefine the terms according to the biblical revelation. And what I help people to understand is, look, when we look at the heart and what the bible talks about when it talks about the heart this is a similar territory to what some of these people are looking at when they call it the subconscious and just about all psychologists i mean they're going to use these terms and so it gets a little confusing for people if you only use terms that they don't have a tangible association to make that being said um when we see uh, some of these parts, right, like uh, the six-year-old I mentioned, what we find is that they are lodged in a deeper place in the mind many times than the presenter is aware of. So it's actually beneath consciousness. You can call it, you know, whatever you want. I call it the heart 
But for some people, it is easier to look at it as as, as the subconscious. And I'm sorry if I because I, I don't want to step on your toes here um, with you know what you're saying about the occult connections. But um, when you're beneath consciousness, there's a lot of things that transact. And I take this back to Matthew 13, which talks about the sower who goes out to sow. And he sows, and, and, I'm, and I'm going here for a reason because I want to make some connections and some testimonies. The sower goes out to sow, and he sows seed, some by the wayside, some on thorny ground, stony ground, and good ground. And they all produce different results. As a matter of fact, the wayside ground doesn't grow at all. The thorny ground, it gets choked out. The stony ground, it doesn't go anywhere. And then the good ground, you get 30, 60, and 100 fold. And, and then when Jesus begins to break this down and says, this is what I mean, he says that the field is the heart by saying that when the seed went on the wayside ground, the enemy came and snatched <clears throat> up what was sown into the heart with the birds. And that's what he represented by the birds, was Satan come and stealing that word. Right. And, and so when we look at the the uh, parable of, of, of the sower, what we see is that the territory, the land is representing different heart conditions. And while many people will look at this and say, OK, well, we need to check our heart and we need to, you know, um, you know, j allow Jesus to heal the different areas of our heart from a very practical standpoint. You insulted me. That hurt my heart. I'm going to go back and, and now I'm going to forgive you and God's going to heal that wound, right? And that's a very practical healing of the heart. Well, what we see in Matthew 13 is that the heart actually becomes a territory. It's, it's actually a very deep revelation that the heart is almost like, you know, um, you go to Chicago, you have Cook County. It's, it's a whole spread of land and you have the capacity to put buildings and structures and grounds and parks and this and that because it is a territory of land. And, and this is how Jesus describes what he calls the heart when we do our study in Matthew 13. What this means is that the heart is an extensive region of land, uh, of, of, of real estate relative to humanity. And what we learn when we get deep into the Bible is that the heart of man is the primary battleground for the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, where Satan is after the hearts of men. Jesus is after the hearts of men. And so what happens for people is that when they begin to go through severe trauma, what they begin to build is an inner world to compartmentalize the structures that are representative of the trauma that is being locked up in their mind behind amnesic walls and barriers. These worlds, which we call inner worlds, are what MK Ultra plays on when they do their programming. They actually help the children to build the inner worlds and put the parts that had the assassin programming in one sector and had the sex programming in another sector. These, But you don't need a programmer to build them. They are actually being built because of the human design. And the human design exists because of what the heart produces. And so, well, we, when we get to work with people, I may find that there is an entire region of the heart with a hundred to a thousand parts of their humanity that have been fractured because of sexual trauma, because of frequencies that have been perpetrated against them in government projects, because of physical abuse they endured, and all these different things. And when we get into the inner world and we find that there are a thousand pieces of their humanity held hostage, we may find that there is a giant overlord named Beelzebub that has a throne over that entire plot that is like a city on the inside of that. And a thousand pieces of their humanity are not being ruled over by Jesus, but by Beelzebub, even though they are coming to your church or my church. And <laughs> we started off when I first began to realize the way the heart worked and the way that the brokenness of a person could manifest in these areas. And, you know, we could rename Beelzebub a uh, uh, cocaine addiction because cocaine is holding authority over a thousand pieces of their humanity. Right? Yeah. And what we found is that, like, we were working with, with God and with the angels to get those parts out of these regions we call them regions of captivity and into a place of healing so that 
they could integrate with the core of the person and not be separated by dissociation and trapped in the region of captivity that is in an area of the person's heart that is under a demonic overlording structure. And then, wait, because we're getting to testimonies, we began to learn how to go after the big guy that lorded over a thousand parts of the person's humanity, take them out, wipe out the city, take all of the parts and get them all delivered and healed within 15 to 30 minutes or less. And we are now transacting these kinds of deliverances day in and day out, almost like uh, <laughs> going to the fridge and getting a snack. We have seen such an acceleration on the capacity for people to get free of massive, massive bondage and massive, massive internal blockages and even interface with uh, heavenly powers and fallen angels in an extraordinary way. And then we have platformed from there to see even bigger deliverances on larger levels, largely because of the prayers that we have developed, which are in our book, Prayers to Shake Heaven and Earth, and on our website, um, beginning with freedom from fallen heavenly powers, which is able to address things on this level. Now, I'm going to stop there because I don't know if I'm well, I, going over the edge. I would tell you that um, over the years of ministry, I've had people that have been in therapy for like 30 years. It took us like 30 minutes to get them free in the name of Jesus. Um, 2 Timothy 2.24, it tells us, The servant of the Lord must not strive to be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves to God preadventures. That means it's going to be a miracle, right? If God would uh, preadventure, give them repentance, the acknowledging the truth, that they may recover themselves. All the snare of the devil is taking them captive of his will. When well, you mentioned, you know, like the cocaine and stuff, all this stuff is, is chemical, all... All these addictions that people have, whether it's food or Pastor Brandon and I do a, a conference called the Chain Breakers. We might take you with us sometime. And we're dealing with this stuff. We're seeing people getting free from it because this stuff is hijacking the, the, the you know, the reward pathways in the brain. Um, like, you know, I, this the saying, you know, neurons that fire together, wire together. So if you wired it in, we can wire it back out, right? Um, for example, when you mentioned uh, cocaine, it's, it's kind of like the pornography today in, in the industry it's um it's you know multi-billion dollar industry they the devil got a, an invested interest in there um so the, these you know these neuron you know the neurons are firing um they're getting some kind of dopamine release they wouldn't nobody would sin if it wasn't pleasurable right right and so there's you know you it, it, you hold hands with somebody you get that oxytocin right um, you, you do something that makes you feel good. It's a dope. I mean, animals, it's, it's just built in, comes with the way God designed it, right? So um, it sets up a whole new set of problems that we, we see now. Um, I, I guess would maybe just, you know, give you a, a crash course here, right? Um, the way your, 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 your mind's interpreting, you're taking in things, that one of the main chemicals is the dopamine. Um, like oxytocin. So normally these chemicals are, are, are readily handy and they, they make us feel pleasure. Um, they bond us with other people and with animals and all the rest of it, right? And, and Brandon could elaborate on the opioid uh, um, issue that's unfolding here today because uh, the enemy's got a, a, an agenda, right? To, to entrap them. Um, so all those receptors, um, uh, they're like the little um, catcher's mitts, right? Uh, that receive the, the, the information from the dopamine in, 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 the, in the mind and brain. So what, what's happened is it's, you're destroying, but the more you go down the pathway with the devil, the more it destroys the good decision maker in the frontal lobe. And, and right. so now you need more and more. And that's why you know, we find, you know, like uh, women will come in and well, my, my husband started off doing, he, he was fantasizing and stuff then. You know, now he wants to act it out in some, some weird perversion or something. Because um, they need more and more excitement to, to, to get the same high bit, like a cocaine user, right? Once he, he uh, does the cocaine, it's like an incredible orgasm. He releases all that dopamine at one time, 
now it's going to you know, take your body like you know, a couple of years to replenish that level. So that's what we're talking about here. Um, all this stuff is, you know, um, there's um, a, a doctor from Princeton that said something about, I think we've, we, we've said it in the conferences. He, he said he, um, uh, from Princeton University, he said it's, it's that we've devised a form of heroin that's a hundred times more powerful uh, than ever before. And it, it's in the privacy of your own home. You inject it directly into the brain through the eyes, right? The yeah. film industry knows this, that, that, you know, the enemies behind the scenes doing this stuff. So, um, yeah. wow, you know, we're here fighting behalf of the word of God. <laughs> uh, no, go, go ahead, Andrew. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was waiting for, for you. And, no, I, I was just going to agree with what Casper said, you know, with the, especially with the... Um, you know, with pornography, and, and it's interesting uh, what we find, of course, you know, dealing with addiction ministry is how often the two addictions go hand in hand, chemical dependency and, and pornography or sexual addiction, um, which oftentimes in today's world is played out through pornography because of the ease of it, uh, you know, the free access and, and availability and the privacy of your own home. And it's interesting because there's a direct connection between those two things in the Word of God, another thing that we teach on uh, profusely when we do, uh, you know, chain breaker conferences. Um, and, and so it's, you know, it, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm sure that you've probably find some of the same things in your ministry. Um, many yeah. times the way that people cover up or deal with that trauma, that pain, uh, is either obviously through drug use or through sex. Um, those are the two primary outlets for masking that pain because of the very thing Casper just shared the dopamine release. And it's interesting because the chemical compound that's released in the brain during drug use um, is the exact chemical comp compound that's released in the brain during sex. Um, and it's also interesting because that same chemical compound is released in the brain in very small, healthy doses during intense times of worship. In other words, we were, in, we right. were created to experience that. We were created to have that rush and to have that feeling but we were created to have that through an experience with our creator not with something false that the enemy has given us on a silver platter with bells and whistles yes well you know uh we i regularly sit down with folks that are looking for help in breaking various kinds of addictions as well as the whole pornography element uh, that that is very common and um i'll tell you what uh, oftentimes it is the mask right it's an acting out and especially with the pornography thing i i i, I mean there are so many people that are very very addicted to it but it's it's them acting out an abuse that was done to them a long time ago and it is. It, it has latched on as an addiction, but sometimes the breakthrough comes back to the healing of the broken thing. You know, one of the things the Bible says is that as a man thinks in, in his heart, so, so is he. Thirsty. Eat and yeah. drink, he says to you, but his heart is, is not with you. Another thing that the Bible says about the heart is that, um, you know, the heart, from it flow the issues of life. And when you look at that passage in Proverbs talking about the issues of life flowing from the heart, that word that is used in Hebrew for issues is actually the same word they use for borders or that the heart will define the borders that either are very restrictive or a person's going to have a very restricted life manifestation or expansive. They're going to have a very expanded life manifestation and the heart is going to determine what, what's in that. And so, you know, as we, believe the lies of the enemy it's constrictive it literally chokes the life out of us as we believe the truth of god's word and the perspective that jesus has of us and he, our identity in him we begin to expand our heart begins to expand into um new realms of possibility to, you know come into alignment with what he's written in his books about us and um with that understood that as a man thinks in his heart so is he one of the things that we have to understand is that, okay, if our brokenness is occupying our heart realm and our brokenness is under the jurisdiction of Beelzebub or Jezebel, 
that is going to be a defining issue in our lives. If we have a lot of brokenness from past abuse that we are now acting out in pornographic addiction, well, those broken parts of us are in our hearts as broken fragments. And yes, we will act out in an addiction because of those broken fragments. And even if we white knuckle the deliverance of the, uh, uh, you know, and, and just not doing it anymore, it's like we are white knuckling it for the rest of our lives. And some people I've talked to have found themselves in this seat. It's like, okay, you haven't looked at pornography in three years. Great. I mean, do you feel free? No, I just feel like I'm dead inside, but I'm not doing it. And it's yep. like, I don't know how to get into that life where it's like, I feel good about what I'm not doing. It's just, I'm just not doing it. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's behavior modification without transformation. And there's a place for that where we just stop doing what's wrong because it's the right thing to do. But there's a place where it's like, when do we connect to transformation? And that's why I have a holistic view of getting people free by looking at the heart. It's like, it's not just deliverance, it's deliverance and healing, both together, plus a reprogramming according to the vision of God for our lives. So not only does the person need to give up the lust spirit, not only does the person need to heal from the brokenness that shattered them in the first place in the area of their sexuality, but then they need to receive God's vision for what they look like without both of those things and step into that identity in Christ. And that transacts largely in the heart. And when we do that, that's those borders of our heart and life beginning to expand. And so I see that there has to be a balanced conversation on everything, whether it's getting free from pornography addiction, whether it's getting free from gambling addiction, whether it's getting free from all this. It's like, let's address all the pieces of the puzzle and acknowledge that there are more, there, there is more than one piece to this puzzle. And let's just put the full, you know, uh, set of tools that the word of God gives us in putting this individual back together. And well, so, it, it, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, isn't it interesting where the word of God tells us to hide the word? Psalm 119, 11, in mm -hmm. our heart. Yes. You know, that too, what you were saying just now, um, you know, Proverbs 25, 28, he that has no rule over his own spirits, like a city broken down without walls, build that wall. Build that wall. <laughs> Walls are good ideas, right? I mean, the Lord, you said borders. God is the one that designed borders. It's his ideas of countries, right? And, and protection for you as well. Now, the Lord Jesus said, if you so much as lust after a woman, you've already committed adultery with it. Well, science and neuroscience has come along and shown us exactly that's what's happening. You're releasing the same chemicals as if you actually did the act. And then we're talking that you were mentioning transgenerational epigenetic inheritances, right? The curses that since the father being passed on the third and fourth generation. So some guy that, you know, as you just said, uh, was in the pornography or a woman. You know, we've, we've gotten that as well now, women in pornography, right? Um, three years ago, they, they came clean that they stopped doing it. They're still tormented. Why? Because you haven't got down to the root issue. I've explained people when, when I moved on my horse farm. There was a tree in the front pasture uh, was, was I was dead, I thought. I, and I, so I took, a, you know, an ax and I chopped it down. I thought I was quite proud of myself, chopping down a tree. That thing had the nerves to grow back the following year. And I had to go dig it up with a shovel. And then it never came back. Hallelujah. So we got to go after the root issue here. Well, and you bring up iniquity. And if I, I would... Can I can I comment on that Please. epigenetics and, and iniquity? Okay, so you know people inherit problems based on their genetic code, and when God opened my eyes to this thing from the Word, you know it really helped me to connect a whole lot of conversations and even and and this goes into transhumanism because of the synthetic corruption of the DNA and how that relates to the end time plans that the enemy has and, and why they matter. You know, so when we look at hemartiology, 
which is the study of sin. You know, we, we get into a, 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 dial, a dialogue on, on several words that all mean different things. And when we look at a passage like Daniel chapter 9, verse 27 or 24, we see the beginning of everyone's argument in the body of Christ. Like, well, okay, is it going to be pre-mid or post-trib rapture? Like everyone's arguing. But in Daniel 9, 24, there's something even more profound that I want to point out. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. Pause there. It lists sin, transgression, and iniquity as three separate things. Not like sin, sin, and more sin. It's just like, no, sin, transgression, and iniquity. They're all separate items. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, in Exodus 34, verse 7, it says, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generations. Again, you have sin, transgression, and iniquity, all different words, all being used in one passage, but referring to different things. And so as we do a word study on this, which, which I did, and it just helps to connect to the whole thing. First of all, we understand that the, ah, generational sin is a little bit of a misnomer. Not, not that it's, you know, there's plenty of people that use it and I know what they mean and God knows what they mean and that's fine. But if, if you're going to be, you know, picky about your words, every use of generational bondage is referred to in scripture as generational iniquity, not sin. Even in the case of Simon, uh, the sorcerer in the book of Acts chapter 8, who gets saved and baptized, yet still is accused of Peter as having been in the bonds of iniquity and in the gall of bitterness. It's not the bond of sin. The sin, that got handled separately. The iniquity is still there. And this is where, you know, deliverance is a very relevant conversation for Christians because people think, oh, you know, sin was handled at the cross. You don't need deliverance. And, and then they meet a Christian that they need deliverance and they're confused. They can't help anybody. And it's like, well, but you're confusing. Your First of all, most deliverance is related to iniquity and transgression. You know, and, and, and so there is a different re there's term for a different reason. And when you look at sin, it means to miss the mark. Iniquity, when you look at it, whether it's the word uh, avon or some of the other words that are deployed in the Old Testament, all referring to that subject, uh, the overarching definition is perversion. Missing the mark, and then you have perversion. And transgression sits somewhere in the middle of sin and iniquity, and it's a, it's a rebellion. And so when we begin to study generational iniquity, what we see is that there is a perversion, and that perversion happens in something called the genetic code. It entrances the genetic code. So if your daddy's daddy had an alcohol problem, that alcohol problem becomes seated in the genetic code, and your daddy picks up that genetic code and has an alcohol problem and then passes it to you. So you have generational iniquity. It's a perversion. And what it is, is it's a deviation of the human genome from what God intended. So the more iniquity a person has in their bloodline, the more deviated their genetics are from original design. And so when you look at transhumanism, what you see is that they're synthetically driving further deviation from the original design of God in order to take man out of their humanity entirely and into what they call post-humanism, which is where there is nothing to redeem left after the merger of man and machine. So this is a very big deal for the kingdom of darkness because the more transhumanism, the more synthetic augmentation they can bring to humanity, the further they are deviating us from original design of God. Same thing that happens through the administration of sin that graduates to rebellion and then outright a shift in the genetic code because of the level of bondage that was surrendered to. This is why... The Illuminati is who they are. You have 13 core root bloodlines that have built iniquity from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation, to generation 
that these people born into these bloodlines have way more, more capacity for darkness than the average Joe because their genes encode for it. It's all based on iniquity. And this is the major battle line for the body of Christ is, okay, we have to begin to look at people's bondage as God's agenda to correct the genetic code in humanity. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I actually wrote about this in a book I, uh, some years ago I wrote called Exposing the Spirit of Self-Pity and explaining how the genetic code has been you know, damaged this way. But I reckon anything the enemy does, God will always outmaneuver. And when we come before God's throne of mercy, grace, and love and repent for these things, we transcribe our mind and healing can happen. Jesus came to mend the broken hearted. I, I just taught this past few weeks at the Upper Room Fellowship on the unloving spirit, which I now see as a part of the transhumanist movement. Because at the core of the transhumanist movement is a desire to discover a way to uh, create a, you know, an interface, a brain computer, um, brain chips, right? IBM's making brain. They want to transfer your consciousness into an artificial carrier because they, they, they want to create a new era for humanity, holographic bodies. The word of God tells us in, in Revelation 9, you know, in those days men will seek death. And shall not find it. They'll desire desire and death will flee from it. Why? Because they will, according to the word of God, achieve immortality without God. And there's a group out of Russia. I, I, I'm, they have the, the 2045 initiative. They, they've assembled a bunch of intellectuals and scientists together, right? They're, they're, they're dealing with developing uh, cybernetic immortality. Um, they want an avatar. They, they want to get your, your brain, um, create ways to, you know, get your consciousness to be transferred into um, computers, into software, with the idea, well, we could just get rid of the body altogether, you know, we'll have real perfection then and transfer anywhere in the galaxies, right? I mean, this is, this is amazing. I, I wrote about that in Unmasking the Future. Um, this is a real thing. Like, uh, there's this chapter result in... Esteban, who wrote the, the uh, Transhumanist Wager, right? Um, he was, he was, he's saying things like, well, hey, when, when people live to be, you know, a thousand years, uh, their, their marriage won't make sense to them, right? Well, wait a minute. It worked okay in the, in the Old Testament when people lived to be 900, 1,000 years old. But now he wants to do away with that. Um, and, and he thinks we're, we're, we're not open-minded enough, right? We're, we're the, those conservative evangelical Christians. <laughs> I mean, this is amazing what's going on. Hey, the, let me just give you the most authoritative words here. Matthew 24, 22, except those days should be shortened, we no flesh saved. Hallelujah. For the next sake, those days will be shortened. Look, guys, it's really time to get on the narrow path of holiness without which no one's going to see God. Um, mm. we, we really need to come to the understanding when the lord jesus said you know you can tell when the weather's going to change how much more can you see what's going on right now i mean this stuff is unfolding we're all three of us talking about this stuff because it's a reality and some of you guys are just messing about you're not taking it as seriously as you need to you have friends and family and neighbors and they, they don't even want to talk about it right you just mentioned um transhumanism or ufos or any other weird stuff that's going on right they just shut down they're, they're almost a, a glaze comes over. It's like trying to reason with somebody that's been programmed in liberalism. Find a cure for liberalism. <laughs> um, <laughs> seriously, ah, ah. this this is a, a time, you know, we come to reason together with God. Um, so we don't run out of time here. Pastor Brandon, would you be so kind? There's people out there that need a touch from the Lord right now. They need, Maybe they need to rededicate your life. Maybe you need to get saved for the first time. Maybe you need a heal healing miracle. Let us pray for you. Pastor Brando, would you, would you be so kind to lead us? Yeah, I'd be honored. Thank you, brother. Father, we just come to you right now. We just want to thank you uh, for the opportunity tonight to spend this time together as brothers, Lord, to, to, to uh, do our very best uh, as humans to speak the truth of your word. Father, we just pray that everything that's been spoken here tonight has been spoken in truth, Lord, and in sincerity. 
uh, anything that we have maybe made a mistake on or misspoken, we ask that you just supernaturally remove that so it doesn't even enter into anyone's way of thinking. Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity. And Father, I do pray for those that are listening right now, Lord, for the one that, that needs healing in their life, Lord. We just pray that you should go up for them, Lord, that you provide the healing, Lord, whether that be uh, a mental, physical, or emotional healing, Lord. You are the great physician. You heal from the inside out. And Father, we just pray that healing in their life right now for the one that needs deliverance, Lord, that needs freedom from bondage, Lord, from the from, from the whatever spirit may be controlling them or controlling parts of their personality or life. Lord, we just pray that right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they would be freed in the name of Jesus, Lord, set free, that chains would be broken, Lord, that you would set the captive free. Father, we pray for the one that's watching this, Lord, that, that has strayed away from you, Lord, and has been convicted by some things that have been said, Lord, that, that even right now as they're watching this, that they would begin to call on your name. Uh, they would they would repent, Lord, that they would, they would confess and they would just understand that like in the story of the prodigal son, that you are standing waiting with open arms for them to return, Lord, for them to return to you and, and, and to come up underneath the, 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 the shadow of the wings of the Almighty to come into that safe place, Lord. Father, we pray for the one that is watching this that may have never called on the name of Jesus, Lord, that right this very moment that they would that they would just hit their knees, that they would call on that name of Jesus, that they would confess that name, that they would confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that, Lord, through that, that supernaturally you would place inside of them the belief and understanding that you have raised him from the dead, that we serve a living God, Lord, that they would begin... Uh, that, that process of healing, Lord, of, of confession, of repentance, Lord. The word says if we were, uh, will confess our sins, that you are faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for the opportunity one more time to be here tonight and to speak your word. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Um, we just pray too that um, that we can come before you now and just uh, renounce and, and repent of any of those things uh, that we participated in within our generations on, on both sides uh, of our family all the way back to Adam um, for any vows and generational iniquities, any false pathways of coping or any ungodly responses that we've entertained on godly thinking, uh, programming coming out of traumas in our life, uh, uh, coming out of abuse, coming out of rejection, coming out of a spirit of uh, abandonment. Um, we thank you, Father God, for freeing us now, uh, that we renounce and repent any um, unloving spirits, spirits of fear, spirits of self-pride, uh, selfishness, um, and any spirits of shame uh, or the broken heart, Lord, that you came to mend broken hearts. So we, we just want to come out of agreement with any spirits of self-rejections, uh, self-pity, self-condemnation. We thank you, Father God, right now that we have authority that you've given us. And then we bind and we break the powers of every antichrist, evil, poisonous uh, spirit that's been um, involved in, in tormenting your your people, that we command those things to go, all the false uh, burden bearing, false responsibility, guilt and shame, all the abuses, sexual abuses, emotional abuses, verbal abuses, that, that you would come and mend those broken hearts, the people that uh, got trapped um, in, in addictions of any kind, in bondage of any kind, uh, whether it be food or alcohol or drugs or idolatry of any kind, we want to come right now and tear those things down from the heavenly we just thank you, Father God, for releasing your people. And we just exercise our God-given authority here and command every unclean spirit to go into the dry place now in the almighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, for um, creative miracles, creative cures to happen uh, to any genetic mutations, um, in any, any of the genes that have been damaged to the immune system, the, uh, the thalamus, the spleen, um, any of the bone marrow that we, no, that, that we Ask that those the immune system in the bone marrow be strengthened, be restored. Uh, we thank you, Father God. We pray against any tumors that uh, have been trying to advance themselves. That those things be turned off. Any any unclean things, uh, spirits of infirmity, that those switches be turned off, and 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 healing virtue 
be released. The healing would, would, would turn on the switches and the genes and the, and the codes that need to be turned on here. We just thank you, Father God. Um, and the immune system to be um, strengthened, B cells, T cells, be healed, uh, the natural killer cells, the microsurges that, that would attack the, any, any cancer cells. We, we thank you, Father God, that those things are happening right now, that you're doing a great and mighty work exceedingly above and beyond what we can even hope and imagine. We thank you for the amazing testimonies that will come from this night, from this time. We pray for, for healing of all organs, internal organs, uh, all limbs, all, all back pain, heart disease, uh, any kind of disease. It's got to go. It's not of God. In Jesus Christ and Nazareth name, we command it all to go right now into the dry place. And we thank you, Father God, that um, you gave us your word, and peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That's all we're willing to do here. We just thank you, Father God. You said, if I, by the finger of God, cast all demons, no years, the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. And we just thank you, Father God. Daniel, please add to that. Well, um, Father God, I just thank you for the opportunity to be part of this conversation. Lord God, I thank you for your people, and I thank you for those that are listening in. Um, Lord, I just thank you for the activation of your grace in the lives of those that are connecting with this podcast, especially for those that have been battling with sin and various kinds of addiction. Lord, it is written, sin shall not have dominion over us for we are not under the law but under grace and lord god i pray that the power of sin would be broken by the overwhelming outflow of your grace to those areas that are hurting broken and challenged in the name of jesus furthermore lord god i loose the river of living water which flows from your thrones to the various broken areas of lives that have connected to this podcast, Lord God, through their hearts and minds for your living water cleanses, renews, revitalizes, and restores. There are three that bear witness in the earth, the blood, the water, and the spirit. And these three agree as one. Lord God, I thank you for a threefold administration in response to these words, that there would be an outpouring of the blood the water and the spirit areas that those that would hear this prayer are holding before you that your power and grace and resources would begin to take root and to work in, in their lives. Lord God, bringing testimony to the finished work of, of Jesus Christ and the power and strength of your name in it is written, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and you shall be exalted in due season. Lord God, we release these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. We'll see you all next time for another spiritual encounter. Not to worry, we'll have Daniel back. God bless you all. Let us praise the name 
like Jesus and do his word. By one spirit we're baptized into one body. Let us stand together and not be deterred. That the Holy Spirit surrounds us in his glory. Let the world see we are Christians and we won't back down. Let the world see we are Christians with a message so profound that signs and wonders follow us around. Welcome to another adventure with Spiritual Encounters. We are here to help represent God's work, not ours. Besides the insightful biblical teachings shared by our host, Pastor Casper, we are also very blessed to be able to bring you outstanding interviews with some of the most sought after deep thinkers and voices in Christendom today, helping to make a difference in this world for Christ's sake. We want to keep it that way, to be truly effective in internal matters, truly demands on prayer and being led of the Holy Spirit. If you, like us, long to see the Lord Jesus, Yoshua, glorified here through spiritual encounters, we invite you to join the prayer team. There is nothing more exciting than participating in intercessory prayer with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are a totally faith-based ministry, and so please give and support spiritual encounters as you are led. Truly Grace and Radio have a lot in common. Grace is free to us, but cost Christ an untold price we may never fully understand this side of heaven. Radio is also free, too. It costs nothing to turn on your dial or stream audio, but it costs us a lot to stay on the air. Spiritual Encounters is almost entirely listener-supported, a privilege, but rare things in these days of big church radio corporations. We've carefully trimmed our budgets to all but wartime essentials, but operating costs are a fact of life. If you've been blessed through our program, here are some ways you can give back as the Holy Spirit leads. Consider becoming an underwriter by contacting us or simply go to the upper room, fellowship.org and scroll down on the main page to donate.
Spiritual Encounters with Casper McLeod is a production of the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries. Visit us at theupperroomfellowship.org. This program is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. The intro and outro music is performed by Casper McLeod from his album, Communion, available at theupperroomfellowship.org. In my face, since I learned to pray.